So tonight I'm back in Disneyland and we're doing another video in the Photography Fundamental Series and tonight we're talking about aperture. Your aperture is the hole in your camera's lens that light passes through on its way to the sensor. By controlling the diameter of that hole, you are controlling the amount of light that is traveling through your lens and hitting your sensor. So aperture is one of the three main methods you have of controlling your exposure. And that's really important in theme park photography because we're frequently dealing with low light levels and so you want to be able to get as much light to your sensor as possible because more light equals more options. Your aperture is measured in something called an F number or an F stop. It's not as intuitive as shutter speed where you measure in fractions of a second. Uh, basically your F number is a ratio of your focal length and the diameter of the aperture in millimeters. So a 50 millimeter lens with a 25 millimeter aperture would be F2. It's, it involves math and it's annoying. So you don't really need to worry about the techie stuff for the purposes of this video. All you need to remember is that the smaller the number, the bigger the hole. And the bigger the number, the smaller the hole. So an F2 aperture lets in more light than an F4 aperture. And an F4 aperture lets in more light than an F8 aperture. Real simple, little number, more light. Big number, less light. Kind of counterintuitive, but once you memorize it, you'll never forget it. So in theme park photography, we want the smallest number we can get. The smaller the F number, that means it's a bigger hole, more lights coming through, and again, more light means more options. That means I have more choices when it comes to choosing a fast shutter speed or choosing a low ISO to freeze motion or to make nice, clean images. When choosing lenses, you'll see that the widest aperture that your lens is capable of reaching is usually going to be printed somewhere on the lens barrel, like this 75 millimeter lens has a maximum aperture of f1.8. This 17 millimeter lens can go all the way to f1.2. That lets in twice as much light and that's one of the reasons this lens costs considerably more than this one. Sometimes you'll also see a range of apertures, like on this zoom lens. You'll see this on zoom lenses where it says f3.5 to f6.3. That means at the wide end, at 12 millimeters, it can go all the way to f3.5. But at 200 millimeters, you zoom in, and now you can only go to f6.3. This lens will not let in as much light at full zoom as it will at its wider setting. And that's something you'll see a lot of lenses do when they're geared towards being more compact, lightweight, or budget friendly. It takes a lot of technology, a lot of mass, a lot of engineering to build a lens that can maintain the same aperture all the way through its zoom range. Like all of the aspects of the exposure triangle, adjusting your aperture comes with a side effect. The side effect with adjusting your aperture is it will also impact your depth of field. So as your aperture opens, again, small number, your depth of field will get shallower. And as you close your aperture down and get into the bigger numbers, your depth of field will get deeper. So take a look at this little video I shot of one of the statues of Minnie Mouse in front of the castle. And you can see, I start out with an f1.2 aperture, nice and wide, shallow depth of field. The castle in the background is blurry. And as I close down the aperture, you'll see that more and more of the background comes into focus. So if you're in love with those shallow depth of field portrait style shots, select a lens with a wide aperture and keep it nice and wide open. If you're shooting more landscape type stuff and you want more of the things in your frame to be in focus from front to back, then close down your aperture. 
for the type of shooting that I'm doing on dark rides, my main concern is light, not depth of field. So I don't have any issues just keeping the aperture open as wide as I can. It doesn't affect my depth of field for the subjects and focal lengths and distances I'm dealing with. Another thing when it comes to choosing a lens based on its widest aperture, like I just showed you, uh, generally single focal length lenses or prime lenses, as you'll sometimes hear them called, generally you're going to come with a wider maximum aperture than a zoom lens. It's very rare to find a zoom lens with a max aperture of brighter than f2.8. You'll see a couple of them out there. There are a few f2s and a few f1.8s. They're very large, very heavy, and pretty expensive, but they can be had. Usually f2.8 or f4 is about the brightest you're going to find on most zoom lenses. So if you want those f1.8s, f1.4s, f1.2s, or even brighter, you're going to be looking at single focal length lenses where you can't zoom the lens in. The focal length that comes with is what you're stuck with, but you get very high quality glass, a very lightweight lens, a very bright aperture, and sometimes they're even cheaper than zoom lenses. So that's about it for this video. I wanted to keep this short and simple and not get into a lot of the tech jargon. I think aperture is one of the simplest of the three uh, main methods of exposure control. So I wanted to keep this simple and lightweight. To recap, aperture controls the amount of light coming into your sensor by changing the diameter of the hole in your lens that the light passes through. A bigger aperture, smaller number. A bigger aperture lets in more light. More light gives you more options. Your largest apertures are going to be found on prime lenses or single focal length lenses, not on zooms, although you can get zoom lenses with wide-ish apertures. That wide aperture, keep it all the way open on the dark rides, that's going to let you use a faster shutter speed to freeze motion, and it's going to let you keep your ISO down to keep your images nice and clean. That's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it informative. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.